guys, it's an exciting day. Um, I know I've been putting it off, but today I'm going to install the upgraded clutch spring and the master cylinder. Um, so yeah, let's see how this goes. Okay guys, so what I've got here is I've got two ratchet spanners. I'll probably grab other spanners as well as I need it. 13 or 10. I've got the spring we're going to install, some nuts and washers, the master cylinder and a Phillips screwdriver. And what we're looking at is removing the master cylinder. So as you can see, it's not the easiest place to work. The way I'll start is I'll remove those Phillips screws and then start loosening everything up. Additionally, I will also remove this standard spring. As you can see, this is the, the bracket that holds the lines here and then I removed all six the screws, but you need to use a thin knife and push it in from the side and it pops off. So I'll probably reseal it with using silicone or something like that. You see the bottom, the right hand side? On the right hand side, there's a, a nylock with a washer and on the left hand side is two lock nuts or two nuts. Also have a wash in between, so I'm going to remove the one, it will fall into the foot well and then we take it from there. First I'm going to remove the spring um, now and then we'll tackle those. So as you can see my car has this stupid rubber cover that the spring is sitting in there. I'm going to try and get to that first, see if I can unclip it from the sides. I'm not sure if you can see this, but basically the spring pushes into the side there, it's sticking out on the side. Uh, I don't think you can, but it comes down to the back of the um, bulkhead and then it pushes out on the side here. So I'll need to unclip it and pull out under the clutch pedal on both sides. So let's see if that's possible from this angle. One side's out. It's easy when you push it down because it basically helps get the one side out. And it drops in. Brilliant. So just remember it swings up. It's got a area. Okay guys, so I removed this. This was the original spring. And then this was the spring or the rubber piece plastic. It feels like that was basically pushing against in the back of the pedal itself. And if I look at that, this car doesn't have a lot of K's on. So you can just imagine what what one can look like that's quite old so it starts wearing the back of the clutch pedal out so yeah let's replace that and take okay guys just a tip to remove these plastic bushes that the spring pushes in you need to wedge it on the outsides against the bodywork and then push it with a with something just to pop out um, so then you grab it on the inside and pull it out basically it's a bit difficult to record down here but I'll continue with that just, just a tip this is pushed in the side this rubber and it's not easy to push out so what I did is and that's just orientation I'm just trying to show you which way is on the inside and the outside so you push it out to the inside but I basically took uh, this pushed it against the bodywork and wedged it to pop that out of the side metal holder piece I don't know what you call it it just pops out quite easily if you do it like that okay guys so the next thing to do is to remove that nylock down that side that should fall down to the footwell when you compress the clutch it pulls this backwards so it makes it easier to get to the nut um, I just had a few planks just pushed it in there not fully compressed just enough to get into the bolt Okay, so using a ratchet spanner, it's quite easy. Screw it over the bolt and can get this done. So I'm going to remove the hydraulic pipe there at the bottom and then also the sensor uh, so that we can pull this out. I'll put everything over once it's out of the vehicle. So to remove the sensor, we need to pop the spring out and then pull the sensor out. 
that's out of the way. As you can see, so I'm going to loosen that. So use a 13 mil spanner. Guys, so there's not too much space to put anything there. But what I'm going to do is, it runs down the side, um, like you can see there, and then it drips down the chassis. So what I'll do is I'll just clean it up. Turn it by hand now. It's still a bit tight. Definitely a bit fiddly. Red balloon. Ah. That's quite a nice angle to work. Comes loose. Very nice. Okay, so, um, yeah, a bit of a stuff up. I went down to remove the stuff, I pushed the clutch and it squirted oil over everything. <laughs> so, please don't do that if you're going to attempt this. But, yeah, let me clean this up. really not the best place to work guys this is horrible guys okay, see if that helps guys this is a shit job i'm telling you if you can pay someone to do us do it maybe the other people that does it the whole time has better methods Okay, Austin, what put us in? Why is it safe for Papa? Ash? I can't all this at all, no, no. No, no? No. Okay, thank you, Betty. A dragon? Yeah. Is that a binner? Yeah. Ash? Okay. <laughs> so, guys, that took a lot more effort than I actually thought it would. So, just bear that in mind if you're going to do this. Comparing the two day, that's what the difference is. Um, I pulled, just turned it and pulled it out from the top. So I'll grab that washer that's still there at the bottom, clean it up, clean the area up, and then push the new, the new one in. And hopefully, hopefully it's easier installing it. But I don't think so. So I installed the two nuts on here that I got with the kit. Um, and there's a washer that you put in, another washer in a nylon after you pushed it in. So I'm going to get this back in place, um, tighten one or two of the bolts by hand and then continue getting this installed. There was a gasket on there, let me show you, there. So I'm going to put some of this car silicone on there just to make sure it's sealed. And then I'm going to push this back in. So when you get it in a position like this, then you can put the washer in and push the bolt through. Okay guys, um, what we've done also is we had a spare 13 that we grounded like this. Um, so if you look at those two nuts that you use to adjust the pedal to, to tighten them with a normal spanner is quite difficult. So if you use something, wedge this piece, wedge, the, wedge that forward and then on this side it's quite easy to, to tighten it with using a spanner like this. I've pushed the bolt through from inside and just hand tightened the nut there. That gives me an opportunity to properly tighten it. As you can see, I've got my two nuts in the washer on that side. And once everything is tightened down, I'll compress the clutch again and put the lock nut in from the back side. After that, it's just closing everything up and bleeding the system. So to put the, the bottom bolt on the master cylinder is quite difficult there's not enough space so what we did is we put masking tape around the point of use a flat piece side of a spanner using your finger like this i managed to get up there and push it in from behind and i used um, a buddy to, to just hold the spanner on the other side put the nut on and then after that i used a ratchet and tightened it from below so that worked quite nice 
Just to give you an idea, um, these ratchet spanners do work quite nice. It's a bit of a fiddly job. You need to turn it quite a lot before it actually tightens. It's quite difficult to get in there. So using this method, it definitely helped a lot. I got the two bolts in. At the front, I have the lock nut, not tightened yet. I've tightened the top one. We'll do the bottom one now, which is going to be a challenge. I'm going to remove the plug now and get the hydraulic hose connected again. Okay, if you look at this, the sensor plugs in here, but there's one copper washer there and two there. So just double check that you maintain whatever is on your vehicle. I've turned that in by hand until it stops. Now I need to put in the hydraulic hose, but it's not as easy as it seems. The angle is just a bit shitty, so it's a bit of a struggle. And then I'll nip the this piece, nip it again, and then get everything tightened. Okay, so I thought I'll show you the tediousness of these jobs, it's like, start there, push up, grab it, start there, push up, grab it, start there, it's freaking a long, slow process. Anyways, that's how it's going. Okay guys, and then Push this one over again. There you have it. Done and dusted on this side. Okay guys, so I'm gonna close up there. Um, by doing that, I'm gonna put some silicone on this plate here. So as you can see, everything is tightened up. Okay guys, so today we're gonna bleed the system. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to first bleed the top piece of the hydraulic system. I'll open this up, get my dad to pump it, close it up again, and then release the clutch. So once it's bled on this side, then I know the first piece of the system doesn't have air, and then it should be easier going forward. So you use a 13 spanner to open and close that section. Um, when you pump it needs to be open, and when you release it needs to be closed. So my dad's helping me pumping and I'm struggling here um, opening and closing it. Um, so what we've done is we took a 13 spanner and cut it very short. I'll show you a photo of it now just to be able to work in there because it's catching on all the cables and stuff like that. So, but yeah, it's starting to work and we're starting to fill the, the bottle here with old brake fluid. So just moving forward. Um. No. Open. Okay guys, so I did get the system bled to a point I could change gears and stuff, but it still didn't feel right. When I put the spring back on, it felt like it was over centering, so it pushed the pedal down and when I pull it up, it, um, you know, pops a bit. So it didn't feel smooth. I sent an email to LAF and they came back quite quickly advising me to maybe re-bleed the system, run it without a spring for a bit until we know all the air is out or until we know it's working properly and then basically take it from there and add a spring later. So it's quite soft without a spring. So I'll first run it like that, see how smooth it is. But I'll re-bleed the system and do a few things, make sure it's as nice as it possibly could be. Okay guys, so as you can see I've got a pipe running from here and it's going back into the cap. It allows me to bleed it alone and uh, you know once the air is out so I don't have to worry about refilling every five minutes. So I try to get rid of all the air but it just keeps, there's still bubbles in this pipe. So I don't know where the bubbles is coming from. I've tried quite a few methods now and it still seems like I'm pushing air through. And I can't assume there's that much air in the system and bleeding from there so it's a very strange situation i'm going to try and reverse bleed it make sure you know it's as hard as i can possibly get it compress it overnight and take it from there okay guys so i'm quite excited i think i sorted it out it seems like i was pumping too slow and it didn't allow the air to go through i was going what i did is i've got a one-way valve on a plastic tube going through so I'll show you the setup later but I decided to have a you know to see if I can push it quite hard not hard but you know at a good pace instead of going 
slow open push close slow open push closed so i've decided to just push a bit harder or faster you can say and then the bubble start going away so unfortunately the line popped off so i'm going to do it one more time make sure i put it back on nicely and make sure there's no kinks for pressure build up points and i'm going to basically do it in that fashion and finish this job off the nice thing is when i got to that point the pedal was quite hard and i'm um, in a good space my assistant so just to show you guys the rate i'm pumping at Boy, it's getting rid of all the air. I don't know if you can see that, I'm holding it funny, but most of the air is starting to come out. It's not as much anymore. Okay guys, just to show you, um, that's the point I had over the nipple, a one-way valve, and then about I'd say probably about three meters minimum of tube to make it work nicely I would probably go five meters next time and I can run it uh, over the bonnet that way but um, this worked great so it helped me a lot finished bleeding the system um, what we're gonna do now is get my wife to drive the car I haven't put a spring back in so this is basically driving um, with the LOF master cylinder without a spring, so it does feel quite good already. Um, yeah, so we'll see what her comments is while driving. Cool. Okay, fully clutch, babes. Babes, I get a net bar so I can net just chill. Yeah, fully clutch. I don't know, let's get the car ride, let's stall me. My young guy is very lichter. I get no spring up, so I can no longer lichter. Yeah, it's a boiler. Like it? Yeah. See if it's Mama. Like it. Mama! Mama! Yeah, baby! Okay, guys, so um, I took the landy for a drive, my wife as well. The clutch is definitely a lot softer. I haven't even put a spring back in. I'll put a spring back in and test that as well. But to show you what I've done with the spanner, it's a 13 spanner, and I made it quite short. It could have probably been a bit shorter as well. Um, it allows you to tighten the bolts by the clutch pedal to adjust it quite easily as well as opening and closing the bleeding valve at the slave cylinder. So yeah, works quite nice. If it's too long, you can't work in there. Still, it wasn't an easy job. It's easy, but not fun. It's frustrating. So um, definitely worth doing it. Um, I'll still play with the spring and see where we end up. Okay guys, so now to finish the install off, um, driven the car with the master cylinder, the LOF master cylinder, and it feels great. Feels similar to how it was with a spring, so what I'm going to, maybe a bit lighter, the wife thinks it's lighter, so um, looks like she enjoys it. So now I'm going to add this to see if it makes a big difference. I still want to feel the clutch, I don't want it to be totally soft, but I'm going to pop this in and ask her to take the car for a spin. So I'm first going to push these in. It's the bush for the spring. Um, I'm going to push it from the inside to the outside and then this one goes in on the clutch pedal over the, the gap. So I'm going to push these in from the inside out. Maybe wedge it. Okay, so I have to just figure out how to get out, guys. Um, so I'm going to pop in one side and then the other side. So this is in. The problem is now to get that spring hooked there so it actually. Shit. I can see this becoming very difficult. Okay, so I got a pipe pushing the clutch down so that I can work easier. Um, yeah, let's see how this goes. Got a vice grip. Let's see if that helps. Oh, 
Ah, oh, fuck, that was more difficult than I thought. Got one in, so what I did is I hooked it. There's like a, a piece of the pedal sticking out there. I just hooked it under there and pushed it sideways. Seems to work quite nicely. And let's see if we're lucky on this side because Well, they make it look easier than it is, so. My assistant looking at my progress. Cheese. 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 <laughs> Are you thin? Yeah, I think that's in Okay, let's prepare the other Hey guys, so I've overlooked something small. There's a bolt at the back of the clutch that stops it from going all the way down. So, um, to get the spring in more easily, you need to undo that bolt. Use a 17 spanner and pull it back as far as possible. Try to get the clutch all the way down. What I found with mine, because I've got the rubber mats in, or the sound proofing, or whatever Landro wants to call it, it doesn't go all the way down. So, I'm gonna, there's a small piece that I'm just going to remove to see if I can get it going against the bottom. Um, and then it should be a lot easier to push that clutch spring into place. Right. Okay, if um, I push it. Right, you try and push there. I'm going to twist this with my two hands. And let me just get in a good spot. Okay, I can't see that, Jason. Right. Huh? Okay, well, tell I'm me. I'm going to write for you then. You can't see. Okay, I'm going to try and... Can you see there? You can see there. I can just try and remove it. I can't really push, eh? Okay, I am pushing. A little bit. I can't see that's the problem. Okay, I can hold it like that. Can you try? Yeah, let me try. You need to cut something with a little groove in it. You can. Maybe that. There we go. Shit. Let me just grab it. Oh, okay, shit. It's in. Is it in? All yeah, the way. It's in. It's in. Okay. Shit, man. Just had to get it like. So we did the spring, and my wife's gonna take it for test drive. Not on her own will. I have to <laughs> say. So. Let's let's see what she's in. If she can still start the car. Da, 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 da. And you feel it, baby. Okay. Is it? Yes, it's on the middle. It's like me. Still need to adjust, adjust the clutch. So, so it's off. Yeah, boy. Like it, it. Mm -hmm. But like you know, manual, right? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay guys, um, so I thought I'll let you know everything I've learned on this um, bleeding. So the first thing is that opening and closing the valve using a friend is great, but it takes a lot of effort and time. It's a slow process. The other thing is if you want to reverse bleed, you can do it with a syringe, but you always tend to get some air in the system. So you need the right equipment for that. Um, on the forums I read that, you know, power bleed isn't good for this system as I think at a slave cylinder you've got a maximum PSI of 5 that you can handle before it pops the seal. Going quicker, getting everything through the system is better than just pushing slowly. I found that, uh, you know, what originally was, I've tried twice, I've reverse bladed once, I've um, used a friend, I pushed pushed it through but always getting in the system it's just a slow process opening that valve and closing it so the thing that worked the best for me is getting some tubing getting a one-way um, valve and putting it back all the way into the system to maintain the level and I could do it myself get enough you know through the pipes to the reservoir and then all of a sudden after that you can just go for it and every 50 um, pumps you can go check the reservoir if all the air collected there um, the only thing I found with going fast is that you do saturate the oil with some air so you'll need to wait a bit eventually to 
to get all the air to go to one point. Then another few um, comments that I got online was that you know leaving it compressed overnight pushes all the air out then the next day you find that the clutch is 100 percent that's a lot of the time the case in the with pumas i'm not sure about the 300 tdrs but the, apparently the bleeding nipple works better on them this bleeding nipple also on the pumas is plastic so you don't want to to break it you have to drop the the transfer case to remove that slave cylinder which is a bit of a mess it's sitting really at a bad space after a few days of struggling, um, you know, trying a few different things, it's part of the having the channel. If you guys have any comments, um, yeah, please let me know. On the master, the power master cylinder from LOF, I want to say it does feel a lot better. Eh? It's like a different car. I'm gonna. I found with when I had it bled the first time, even with some bubbles, it still changed gear. I had a, the spring on, which was a slip to put on and um, I found it was too soft so I still want to feel the, the clutch I'm going to put the original spring back and I'll let my wife do a final drive and she'll be able to tell you how it feels because she hates cars that aren't automatic so um, yeah if she likes it then it's a plus for me and yeah we take it from there guys thanks for watching please feel free to subscribe it does help me um, get motivation to do more videos like that um, the few things I'm currently busy with is I've just pulled the wires through for the EGT monitor I'll put some detail on that later we're busy with a custom design bash plate there's also um, soundproofing coming up although I've got some soundproofing and I'm getting good comments on the look of the Defender especially removing the original bull bar I'll show you a photo just there um it was nice but i looked for something a bit more modern you know using having a car with a bull bar like that didn't didn't do much so there's a few big projects coming up and sorry for the delay in posting videos but work comes first and then work weekends when i have some opportunity with two kids and a wife it's not easy to get time and i think most of you guys would agree so Guys, thanks for watching and then I appreciate everyone's time and the amount of views I'm getting shows that people do watch but not a lot of you guys are subscribed so I'm not getting money out of YouTube for this. This is just me having fun with the landy and I hope the videos gives you guys the opportunity to also, to also spend some time on the landy. Okay guys, have a good one.